Hello there and welcome to Water Child Tarot. I'm your host Sarah and thank you for joining me for this VR to Tom Benjamin's recent video, Tarot Decks for Pride and Anytime. And I really appreciated the way that uh, he framed this conversation um, and I was intrigued to see some of the decks that he presented and wanted to present some of my own. So uh, let's get started. Now I want to preface my video here by saying that um, I identify as bisexual and I don't talk about my sexuality very much. I feel for me personally, sexuality is a very personal thing and um, it is just one aspect of my overall uh, self and personality. Um, so while I don't hide it, I also don't flaunt it um, and I probably don't read as particularly queer person just to look at me. Um, so in some ways I wanted to celebrate that and people who identify along these lines along with me um, because I think a lot of the decks that are um, very queer focused um, and I'm glad that these are available and on the market so that people can um, relate and find themselves uh, you know shown and valued um, in tarot artwork but at the same time, I don't personally identify with a lot of the decks that are as explicitly marketed as gay or lesbian or queer um, or divine masculine or feminine uh, decks. And that's fine. Um, but I guess this is my sort of, um, I don't know, unseen sexuality <laughs> response to to this kind of concept or, um, or this discussion. So one uh, kind of blanket statement I want to just remind everyone of is that you can't judge somebody's aspects based on their appearance. Um, and that goes for their, you know, ethnic background or their religion, um, as well as their, you know, gender uh, presentation, the pronouns they prefer, their sexuality, etc. So um, here's uh, the Gaian Tarot is the first deck I'm going to show you. And um, none of the decks I'm going to show you are explicitly marketed as queer decks. Um, but I think these, you know, allow space for... Um, for interpretation or for that to be um, something that is represented, even if it might be subtly or, you know, um, only sort of hinted at rather than very explicit. Um, but, you know, I like this deck because it does involve a lot of different kinds of people and a lot of other diversities. Um, this is the Hanged Man, um, but in this deck it's called the Tree, and I just turned this around so we could see the figure more clearly. And, you know, you might say, oh, okay, well, this is a very heteronormative card and it is in a way with an obviously male presenting and a female presenting uh, person in a couple. Um, but, you know, we don't know if either of these individuals might be trans. We don't know if either of these in individuals might identify as bisexual as well. So, you know, just that openness um, in the way some of these uh, figures are presented and the inclusivity overall makes me feel like there's going to be space also for different sexual identities or gender identities in this deck because so many other aspects of um, identity are well represented here. And so for each of these decks I've just pulled out um, exemplary cards. I'm not going to show you the whole deck. Right, so that's the Guy in Tarot. It is still in, uh, in print from Schiffer um, Publications. The next deck I'm going to show you is the Star Seeker Tarot. Um, this is by Nikki Ferrato, the Van Mystic. And um, this is still in print over on her Etsy shop. Again, um, a number of cards, and this is a pocket edition, so I'll have to hold it up for you. A number of the cards may at first glance present as quite heteronormative, and certainly you can read them that way. But I think, again, there's space in this deck um, for different uh, gender expressions in particular. Um, and there's also just, um, you know, moments where, you know, I... I certainly wouldn't make a value judgment on any of these particular characters. So hopefully, if I'm reading for somebody with this deck, that they feel that they're represented here too in some way, or at least um, get this sense of openness and that um, many of these figures could be any, any number of gender identities. The next deck I want to share with you is an oldie, uh, but a goodie, the Cosmic Tarot by Norbert Loesch. Um, he was a German uh, tarot artist and uh, student. 
and um, produced this deck in the 80s, but it has a sort of a 70s feel to it. Um, and again, there's a number of maybe more explicitly heteronormative um, cards in this deck, but there's a lot of figures that are seem to be from the theater, from dance and live performance. And as we know, there's a rich history of, um, I guess, what would I say, support or just um, allowing space for uh, queer identities in those professions as performers. And so I feel like, again, there's um, just room to interpret these cards in different kinds of contexts and, you know, all different kinds of people that we see here. Um, this emperor, emperor looks heavily made up to me, looks like uh, they're wearing, you know, eye makeup and lipstick. Um, and I don't even know if, if some of this, uh, you know, ambiguity or whatever you want to call it is intentional. It's probably not. Um, it's just the artist's style happens to read this way. But I'm, I'm glad to have decks like this in my collection because, again, it's just about making space for, um, for us to represent different kinds of people that we interact with in our daily lives and also make space for ourselves when we're reading tarot. So again, the Cosmic Tarot. And this one is, um, I have a vintage copy here, but you can still get this from US Games. All right, my fourth selection for today, and I only have five, so this video is not gonna to be too long. Um, but this is the Yarn Tarot. It's a modern uh, or very recent publication. It says the Yarn Tarot for crocheters, knitters, spinners, and weavers. And I've been a member of the knitting and yarn community longer than I have the tarot community. And I will say that a lot of the um, discussions of representations in terms of models, in terms of um, how patterns are released and how they're um, fit for different people with different kinds of bodies, including um, people who may be transitioning from uh, one body type to another or things like that has been a, a you know very big and active discussion in the um, yarn and knitting and clothing making communities um, for a number of years now. What I like about the yarn tarot is again it leaves this open space um, and it does have some representations that might be a little bit different than what we might think uh, stereotypically of as um, knitters especially as being you know older women um, older straight women. <laughs> um, this uh, has different kinds of representations both in the activity of making fabrics but also in the activity of wearing fashion. So um, it's not blatantly queer, I would say, but again, I think there's space for that. Um, so you have uh, figures who are wearing different kinds of garments. Um, you have, for example, the King of Swords is knitting a blanket. Um, you have things like bright colors and rainbows. And then you have um, things like uh, male presenting figures wearing scarves and shawls. And I realize that for some people that's like a very subtly, you know, not very maybe um, impactful fashion choice for a guy. But trust me, there's still a lot of people that hold that things like um, shawls, for example, are only for women or female presenting people. Um, and so I just appreciate that the designers of this deck did include, you know, even in the body posture here, they included some nods to, you know, non heteronormative um, manifestations of uh, sexuality, I guess. So, you know, again, maybe not, maybe not groundbreaking, but I think um, adaptable and and um, and representative of the people that we see in the textile community. And I like I like the expressions and I like the body language in this deck, and I really do like the the fashions. You know, here we get um, pot potentially a couple, but I can't. I would not feel comfortable assigning any kind of, you know, gender or sexuality uh, qualities to these folks. So it's it's left open ended for you to kind of interpret however you would like or however maybe the person you're reading for would like. All right. And then the last deck I have for you is maybe a little bit um, more on the explicitly queer spectrum. This is the Tarot Sirene by Wandering Oracle. Um, and I believe that Georges uh, does identify it as queer in some way. I'm not exer exactly sure of, um, you know, all of his identities uh, or their identities, I should say. Um, but uh, this is a mermaid deck and it's a very colorful mermaid deck. And there's the backs, they're very um, iridescent rainbow. 
And then uh, the cards themselves, again, these characters, you know, through the expression of hair and the way that their their bodies are decorated with this merfolk um, aspect, they just, I don't know, they look like they could be in a pride parade to me, um, or at least many of them do. And again, we get some ambiguity. We also get, um, you know, these very uh, sort of bare looking dudes um, in some of the, the court cards. Uh, that looks like, you know, maybe a sailor type or something like that. So anyway, it's not, it's not marketed as a gay deck. It's, it's, you know, it is, is a mermaid deck, but again, I think it leaves space for, you know, different kinds of expressions. So I would be curious to know, uh, what you think of any of the decks I've mentioned here or um, if you want to make your own VR to this tag, uh, please do. And I would love to see what decks in your collection um, leave space for folks of, of uh, different aspects of the queer community. Um, please uh, link your video in the comments below so I can see them. And um, with that, I will just say thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for being you. And I hope that you, you know, feel safe and that you are in a community where you can be yourself. And if not, I hope you can get help to, to find that for yourself because it's very important. So with that, I will just sign off and say have a great day and I'll see you soon.